Hi. Did you know most computer shops? They replace the power supply and they trash the old one? The reason is because they don't know how to fix it. Let's learn how to fix a switching power supply. This power supply is good. There is nothing wrong about it. We will just use it to learn how to fix switching power supplies. The good news about this is it must be clean. But in real life, we will get very dirty power supplies. You have no idea how it looks like if you are a beginner. If you already have experience, you know what I'm talking about. But before removing the cover, let's pay attention to the following pictures. Okay, this one doesn't look like the pictures we saw. Do you see this, those wires? Okay, they should not cross between the radiator because we are expecting the radiator to get hot and we don't want to melt the plastic covers from the wires and make a short circuit with it. So this is the first thing we have to correct and um, it came like that from the factory. So when we assemble this toy, oh it's very tight, we have to put them in the way that they don't touch any metal. We are leaving the taking apart area. Now, very important, do you see those big guys there? Okay, they are the main capacitors and what we are going to do is to take a pillar like this and a resistor and we will go to those capacitors and we will try to discharge them. like that. We have to spend some while that's in case of the power supply was connected. Once the demand capacitors are discharged, now we can go to the next step for cleaning. As I said in one of the videos, which one is better if the vacuum machine or the compressor I ready to use the compressor and no one of them is good enough if you don't use this tool. You must take it apart and brush it too in the same time and you will get a very clean equipment and not something that you think is clean outside but is still very dirty inside. Now. Let's go to the semi-dirty area. Here is the rework area. What we are going to do here is to look for any kind of problem in the printer circuit board. It could be the solder, it could be heating element, uh, just uh, visual inspections. Uh, for that I have all this kind of equipment and uh, when I said visual inspection, I want to talk about this. I'm very proud of my eyes, I have very good eyes, but I cannot trust what I do. If we're going to make a visual inspection, we need good equipment for it. Uh, it's not what is seen very easy, it's what is hard to see, what we want to find. And please don't forget to use your safety glasses, I have two colleagues that I saw in my career 
uh, they lose one eye just by a stupid mistake that could be solved with uh, one dollar safety glasses. Now, let's go to the printed circle board. As I said, first step is to look for any kind of problem with the solder. Uh, let's pay attention to the following picture. That's what we are looking for. Broken uh, place where the solder is not making a good contact with the device. Now to understand a little bit of this uh, thing, if you can see there are two kind of island and some people live here and the other people they live in the other neighborhood. Uh, what happened here is uh, one is the primary stage and the other is the secondary stage and supposedly they should be insulated. The way that they communicate is by one optical device here that is the one who will give a reference of the voltage sense in the other side from the uh, output and will be interpreted to control the PWM chip. If you want to fix a switching power supply, the first advice is get the information about the PWM chip. Uh, what I mean, get information, I mean get the data sheet, uh, write down the value for each transistor, diode, uh, any semiconductor device you find on the way. Make a list, googleize them in internet, uh, get the data sheet, and then you know what do you have and what are you dealing with. Sometimes you have uh, two diodes, and sometimes you have a transistor. And when, if you are going to make a measurement with the tester, you don't know what that you're doing unless you have the data sheet. So get, get a list of them get the data sheet and now you are ready to work fast and quickly if you get a peak of voltage you are going to get troubles in this area here you have a thermal resistor in serial it will increase its resistance as you consume more current we have the fuse the bridge rectifier could be one element or could be four diodes like this one Sometimes you have some uh, devices to make a short circuit in case of a voltage peak. There are two diodes one against the other and with a very low reverse uh, peak uh, voltage. So they will become a short circuit and they will let the current to pass. It will make a short circuit blowing the fuse and the rest of the circuit will be invisible for the voltage peak. So. The main problem with voltage peak will affect this area. Don't forget you must remove these capacitors and make a measurement of them to ensure they are okay. The other kind of problem we get with them when the power supply is inefficient and the computer turns off is because those capacitors, they start getting bad. By the way, I thought I had a good power supply and this is totally flat, but these guys, they are getting inflamed. So, it means I will have to fix this uh, power supply. I didn't expect it, and as you see, now I have something to give service to. Uh, this other guy too is getting inflated. Uh, when they get uh, inflated and ready to explode, they are not good. Uh, they're inefficient, they, they will give uh, less uh, current back. And let's pay attention to the following video about this kind of capacitors. When we have capacitors in a printer circuit board in a switching power supply, like this one is a switching power supply. If you see the surface of these capacitors, they look good, healthy. But when you see something like this, or this other guy, did you see that the skin, let's call the color skin, is peeling out? It's because the capacitor was overheating and the plastic starts moving away. 
if the top of the capacitor is in flame ready to pop out to explode in other words or the skin move it away just by that save your time with the reading and you know you have a bad capacitor another example take a look to these guys do you see this suspicious guy and this other two okay they are capacitors who has been suffering because the temperature back to it so when we get a voltage peak will affect this area if we get a power supply that shuts down the computer and is inefficient we are talking about to replace capacitors in this area always replace them don't think twice about uh, they are not too expensive and you will give a good service with it when you get a big explosion with a smoke and short circuit and it doesn't work and all the big deal with it is because you have two power transistors and they get damaged they can get in short circuit they can get open and with them a bunch of other components they are going on the way there are two small ohms uh, resistors i mean two low ohms resistors they must be replaced and they are very low uh, almost in the lower scale in the uh, multimeter you can now get precision if they are good enough or not so replace them uh, i will find them on the this uh, power supply later and with those uh, two small resistors they are linked uh, most of the time uh, to diodes and they go to two small transistors they can go directly or they can go by a, a small uh, transformer like th those ones uh, those transistors could be either one this or this or this and uh, this other guy and they are you will recognize them because they are connected directly to the PWM uh, chip so now you know what to replace in case of another thing that I always uh, change is this optical device is the accumulation as I told you some people they live in this part of the neighborhood and the other people they live in the other part and this is the guy who transmit the message from one to the other and this optical device is always linked to a voltage reference in one of the sides the voltage reference could be done by a thinner diode with a transistor or most of the cases uh, nowadays they use a chip uh, it has some kind of letters with the numbers 431 or something alike and you will know it's a voltage reference chip I replaced them too and let me tell you in big TVs like plasma LCD I used to just uh, change this so these two guys and the TV come up to come on to life again and I get money in my pocket you will need uh, two multimeters one to trigger the light here and the other to uh, make a measurement of the conduction in the other side of the sensor and you will know if it is good or not if it is not replace it and it's good to replace this if one of them is bad uh, by sure the other one could be gone too one more thing you need to know is we are looking for any kind of heating marks I mean the printed circuit board will change the color and also the device uh, can show that it was overheating most power supplies they are alike uh, if you know one of them you know all of them uh, they are like humans they have two legs two hands the two eyes only one nose and it doesn't matter the design at the end they are almost the same thing uh, here maybe it's hard for the camera to show there is a color changing in the printer circuit board could be this diode could be this resistor I have a picture that I want to show you in another power supply as I said if you know one of them you will know all of them um, probably here we have to change the resistor and lift up the resistor so it will not be so close to the printer circuit board let's pay attention to the following picture
just to remember we have the entrance with the AC voltage coming here through a thermal resistor that will increase the resistance if we increase the consume in current in the power supply we have the fuse we have the bridge rectifier made by four diodes or one only device we have the two mine capacitors that we have to remove and make a measurement of them do you remember I told you when we have the big stuff, uh, the smoke, the explosion and the short circuit and everything? For this power supply, those big transistors, they are located here. I already identified them. And also I told you about uh, some small resistors that you have to change with them. Okay, they are right here. One is here, the other probably you cannot see it because it's under that radiator. They are very small resistors, 2.2 ohms and they are connected to the base of those transistors. The accoplation could be through a transformer or directly to the two small transistors I told you you have to change to. One is right here, the other is next to it. And they are connected to the PWM chip. Also I told you this is the primary stage, this is the secondary stage and we have some coils for the accumulation in the output and we have some capacitors that most of the time we have to change as soon as they get old or used and we have to service the power supply like today that I said uh, I'm just removed the uh, working from the computer to make the video I was expecting it was good, but I already realized I must service too. So most of the cases, you must change it. Remember in electronics, everything can go wrong. Any transistor, resistor, diode, capacitor, whatever. Even from a cable, wire, the insulation, the plastic support, uh, the metal shield, and everything could be the damage but statistics and logic and quality control says things they will break by the weakest point so if you know what is the weakest point in any power supply you will be able to fix it a decent computer shop will replace about 40 power supplies per year in the next 10 years they can trash 400 of them and that's a lot of money if some of them they are 50 dollars thanks by watching it